Catalog, brought to you by the Austin Metropolitan Ministries. In the weeks ahead, you will see these and other programs by various denominations. Dialogue, a public affairs program at the crossroads of religion and life, a series highlighting the cultural and social interaction between the worshiping and religious communities in and around the capital city. Austin Faith Dialogue is brought to you by the Austin Metropolitan Ministries in cooperation with KTVC. Join us now in Austin Faith Dialogue. One of the elements of Austin Faith Dialogue that I enjoy in hosting this program is the opportunity to meet my neighbors in this city where we all live. There are in Austin people of commitment. There are in Austin people of faith. And there are in this city in which we live people of compassion. On our program today, I'm going to introduce to you such persons, for they represent a group of Austin citizens concerned about one of the priority issues of our day, and that being housing. Habitat for Humanity brings people together in a practical, hands-on approach to faithful living. Hi, I'm Carl Gronberg, pastor of Gethsemane Lutheran and the host for your program, and good to have you with us today. And I'd like you to meet three of the people who are eager to share with you the story of Habitat for Humanity. David Leslie is the executive director of this ecumenical Christian group. Donita Hayden is president of the board for Habitat for Humanity, the Austin affiliate, and Dale Rogers is one of the volunteers for Habitat. Welcome to the three of you, and I'm really glad that you take time out of your schedules to come and talk to us about uh, something that all three of you find yourselves committed to and sharing in the city of Austin where we live. Welcome. David, let's start with you. Let's talk a little bit about um, Habitat for Humanity and where it received its genesis, its birth, and uh, give us a little background and history of Habitat. Habitat for Humanity was a project that began in rural Georgia back in the late 60s and got its start as international Habitat in the mid-70s. Uh, Millard Fuller was the founder of Habitat. Uh, Austin Habitat began uh, as an affiliate in 1985. Uh, we began working on small renovation projects and have moved into the new ho home building uh, mode at this point. When you talk about uh, Georgia, my mind goes to America's Georgia. My mind goes to Clarence Jordan. Many of us have read about him and his works. And then you mentioned another name, Millard Fuller. Uh, that probably went by most of the people who are viewing this program. Uh, those people, they were coming out of a sense of faith and commitment to improving the lives of other people. Uh, could you talk a little bit about this Millard Fuller? He's going to be here, and later on the program, I want you to tell us a little bit about when he comes, but this is a man who has a very interesting story, David. Millard uh, came from, from Georgia, was a very active businessman. In fact, my understanding is by the time he was in his 20s, late 20s, he had already made a million dollars. Very successful story, a sort of um, American dream. He had made it. Uh, later on, in, in, as he got into his 30s through some, some personal... Uh, reevaluation of his life, uh, some family problems, uh, looking at where he was in his own community, and he felt he had lost touch a bit. 
chance to reevaluate that, particularly through Koinonia Farms and his friend Clarence Jordan, uh, and decided at that point to give it all up and uh, to, to look at housing as an, a way of expressing one's faith by working in the community with, with people in need of uh, adequate and decent housing. Working in the community, I hear you say that. It seems to me that's what Habitat is all about. It's, it's changing uh, ideas and thoughts uh, on the grassroots. Oh, absolutely. The, uh, the home that Habitat volunteers build is much more than just a place for shelter for people. It's a model of community, of uh, neighbor helping neighbor, uh, expressing one's faith or, or political ideology through building that house. So it's much more than just a home, but it really is getting people involved in community and models of community. It becomes a symbol then for all of you involved in Habitat to say to the community, for instance, here in Austin, uh, we do care about not only what people live in, but what is the tone, what is the spirit of our community. Uh, Donita, let's, uh, let's ask you, because you're, uh, as I understand, chairperson of the board, is that correct? That's uh, right. What does that mean to be president of the board of Habitat for Humanity uh, Austin affiliate? Well, I, I, it means that I'm the person that was elected by the board of directors to lead the board this year in 1992. Uh, accomplish the goals that we have for the year. We're about to have a big planning retreat where we'll uh, extend those goals out in, through the end of the year, but uh, I'm just the leader of that group. How many people are on your board, Donita? We have 11 right now on that board, and we should be increasing it this year. Mm -hmm. And people who come and volunteer their time and their efforts, they are invited then to be on the board, or how does that process happen? Uh, through a nomination process from the existing members of the board of directors. As chairperson of the board, uh, for Habitat for Humanity. What, what do you see as, uh, now you're going to have a retreat you mentioned, uh, what do you see as some of the goals? What do you want to do as a citizen, a neighbor here in Austin for this affiliate to do? This affiliate is just like I think all the affiliates across the world for Habitat. Our goal is to provide adequate, decent, safe housing for people to have ownership in who probably would never have the opportunity to do so otherwise and to make sure that they have good housing and are not in shacks. Mm -hmm. Tony, uh, I met you s just before we went on the program. Uh, David asked you to come and be here, so I, I know very little about you. Uh, tell me, how did you get involved in Habitat for Humanity? How did you hear about it? Um, how come you're giving of your time and your energy? Well, about two years ago, uh, during the Thanksgiving Christmas season, when we all read about special projects in the newspaper, I'd read an article in, I believe, Reader's Digest about Habitat, and then I heard a radio program about Habitat, and as a result of that, I called the Habitat offices and met one of the active volunteers and was immediately uh, brought into the organization <laughs> in a very active way. My background is real estate and construction, so as a result, I had some experience to lend to the group, and it just fit perfectly with my background. You are a wonderful show and tell for us, because that's exactly what we're hoping is going to happen with this program on Austin Faith Dialogue. Those watching the program say, aha, that lady in real estate construction, if she can do it, I can do it. And they'll come and call the office and say, we want to be a part of it. So that's helpful to know how you got involved in it. Has it been rewarding? very very rewarding uh, the first house that we built after I became a part of the organization was a young woman who had six children and perfect candidate to be a habitat homeowner because she was very hard-working very honest and very involved in the process so it was very rewarding to watch her and her family move into that home and take care of it could we talk about that in just a little bit I want to go to Dale but could we talk about that process how do people become you say the perfect candidate mm -hmm. um, how does one become a part of the um, habitat for humanity work here in austin in terms of home ownership but let's think about that for a minute and let's okay. go over to dale and meet dale rogers a uh, teacher over at austin community college another one of our neighbors and dale good to have you on the program Thank i understand you. from uh, david leslie he was bragging to me about you and he said this is a guy who um, really gives a lot of his time and his energy and works a lot on saturdays how did it happen that um, Dale Rogers got involved in Habitat for Humanity? The church of which I'm a member had a work day, a volunteer work day at Habitat, and uh, I just signed up to go and then got interested and have kept coming. Your congregation then uh, put out in their parish paper their newsletter or Sunday bulletin, and right. you saw it and said, that's right. something that yeah. is interesting to me. Right. They do that about twice a year. And uh, Habitat generally encourages groups to do that, churches and all kinds of groups. doesn't have to be necessarily churches, but they do that f quite frequently. 
You could in, be involved in a group other than a congregation to be involved in Habitat oh, yes. for Humanity. What do you do? Are you a man who uh, pounds the nails with a hammer? Are you a, a saw man? What, what exactly does Dale Rogers do out there? Well, just kind of whatever I can do. I'm not a finished carpenter by any means, and so I can do rough construction, help with wall framing and concrete forms and things like that. And, and lot, there's lots of grunt labor that everybody needs to do, and so we do a lot of that. You look like you'd be great in the grunt labor area. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Strong and willing. Yeah. Uh, David, uh, coming back to you, uh, you have some sort of conference that's going to be happening here, and we want the Austin community and our neighbors watching this program to be aware of it. What's going to happen here? And tell us a little bit about it, where it's going to be held, and what the dates are. Uh, the conference will be the fourth annual Southwest Regional Conference for Habitat. Uh, representatives from Habitat affiliates all over Texas and Oklahoma will be coming. Uh, we expect somewhere in the neighborhood of 150 people attending this conference from outside the Austin area, plus our you know, representatives from uh, interested folks here in Austin. Uh, the, the, the purpose of the conference really is to gather together to share ideas, uh, get the news on what's happening with affiliates, uh, sh share resources. Uh, of course, this year we have Millard Fuller coming to speak. Mm -hmm. He's a very dynamic speaker, very motivational speaker. Uh, he can tell the Habitat story, I think, as well as anyone, of course, and uh, it's really it's a privilege yet a challenge for us here in Austin to have him here to, to uh, get our supporters and new people out to uh, attend the event. The event will be held uh, February 23rd and 24th uh, at Central Presbyterian Church. And people can become a part of that by contacting your office? They can contact our office. Uh, we can send them the appropriate uh, registration forms if they're interested in the whole weekend activities. If they're interested in the Friday dinner and the uh, uh, Miller Fuller speech, then we can just have them come to that. Mm -hmm. You have been executive director for um, a short amount of time. I think you told me that you have a son. Is that a, I have a son, two a and a half months two and old. And a half months. I thought I blew it there when I said son. I said, oh, a daughter. But you have a son, two and a half right. months old, and you came on board as executive director about the same time. Is that correct? That's right. I started on Wednesday, and he was born on Thursday. Oh, goodness. So it was uh, exciting keep, times. Keep time very close together. In the right? Leslie household, exciting times. What do you see as the mission, the reason for Habitat? You, this is an ecumenical group. You involve a lot of people of the faith community. Um, and, and people of goodwill are invited to be a part of this. You don't check their theological credentials when they want to join Habitat. Uh, what's the mission? What's the purpose? The purpose of, of Habitat, in addition to building the houses and providing safe uh, and decent housing for people, I think is to, to challenge the faith community, too, to be involved in, in, in our neighborhood, in our community. Uh, a lot of time, our, our concept of mission is something abstract. It has a very foreign flavor to it when the church's mission is really here at, in, in our community I think also we we use language of uh, signs of the kingdom uh, you know, kingdom language involves uh, inclusiveness and community uh, again we go back to that term uh, you go out on a Saturday at Habitat and you'll find uh, people from congregations you'll find people from civic organizations uh, professionals uh, construction people that uh, just feel committed to, to giving a little bit more to, to, the, to their community. Again, I think that's what the mission of Habitat is, uh, and that's what we're trying to do here in Austin. What I'd like to do now is bring up on the screen a, um, a picture, a map, uh, if we could, of an area of project site. And it's there, David, in front of us, and our viewers are seeing that. Could you describe a little bit about that? I see East 7th Street. Tell us a little bit about the project site and some of the things that are being done there. And if you think that maybe uh, Dale can jump in and add some things, call on Donita or Dale. But explain to the viewers a little bit about that. I can just say that this neighborhood that we're building in is the Rosewood Glen Oaks neighborhood in uh, Central East Austin. Uh, it's a neighborhood we started building in last year. Uh, we have uh, two lots that we're building on right now, one we just completed and seven others. I think uh, Dale or Donita may be able to to talk a little bit more about the dynamics of what actually goes on the site and when we build. And Donita, could you explain a little bit of what happens on the site and how do you get the property and that type of thing? Well, these particular lots were donated to us by the city of Austin. Uh, as far as what goes on on the site, most of the work goes on on Saturdays. Let's uh, go back again. The city of Austin donated those, uh, where we saw those, that's that right. site. They donated that land to Habitat. Yes. 
That's interesting, all right. I think it was actually a dollar we paid for each <laughs> lot. It's a nice donation. Yeah. And then what happens? You do your work on Saturdays, you say? Most of the work is done on Saturdays there because that's when most people are able to get away from their jobs and their family commitments to join us in working. We do have a few people who are able to work during the week and are always looking for people who have the time to work during the week. Uh, Dale, what happens? Uh, how early in the morning do you get there? You, you teach school at ACC. You get up early on Saturday and go work? Yes, sir. Uh, usually we try to be there around 8.30. Some folks don't show up until maybe a little later. And, and we work until the volunteers get ready to go home. Uh, can be in the middle of the afternoon, 3, 4 o'clock. Uh, do you have a foreman, Dale? Is there somebody, is David out there telling you what to do, or do no, you have somebody else? David has, has more uh, office responsibilities. We do have a, a, a lead foreman that's a, a construction person, and he knows how to build houses, and so he's in charge on the site. He's responsible for ordering materials and making sure things are there, ready to go. And then he organizes the volunteers as they arrive and gets different groups doing different things. Is he a volunteer also? Uh, he's a minimally paid volunteer. Uh -huh. uh, I say it that way. It, he gets a small stipend to complete the house. And we did, felt we needed that just for the continuity of things to keep, keep everything tied together right. Uh, there are a number of other people who are pure volunteers who come all the time and they take on varying responsibilities like there's a group of electricians that do the electrical work and uh, from time to time we've had uh, plumbers do the plumbing and we'll have like a guy that's a finished carpenter come out and finish the fascia and the trim and the handrails and all these different little details that need to be tended to. Mm -hmm. uh, well, Dale, what do you get out of it? What is the reason that you are there uh, participating uh, carrying the, uh, the cement, uh, doing the different type of grunt labor. What, what's in it for you? Well, I, I just personally enjoy building houses. I, I enjoy doing things. I'm a kind of a construction type person in terms of what I like to do. And then I like the philosophy of helping people get into affordable housing. All right. And, and I that's think that's basically what everybody gets out of it. It's their own version of an ego trip. But and have, helping people to um, live out the American dream of having a place to live. Is that what you're saying? Yes, I'm going to push you a little bit more, Dale. Is there also yeah. a possibility that you might be living out your faith commitment? Uh, yes. Okay, thanks. Yeah. If you'd said no on that, I'm not so sure what I was going to say in return. <laughs> Donnie, we talked about the uh, perfect uh, person. You mentioned a, uh, a single parent, is that right you said, That's with right. Uh, six children? Right. How does one become involved in being a, a person who could get a home through Habitat for Humanity? Well, first of all, we have a family selection committee who's responsible for interviewing families. And mo the families can be single parents or they can be a typical husband, wife, children, one, two. There's no specific guideline as to the size of the family. But they're usually referred to us by someone in the community or a church or a civic organization or someone like that. And we have applications that they fill out in an interview process with our family selection committee members. That's what I want to zero in on. Could you help me a little bit on that? What you're saying then is that they would be referred to you. If a person watching the program says, I want to apply for a home, they can do that without coming through a congregation or yes. a civic group or something like that. They Definitely. can do it of their own. Is yes. that right? And then they go through a process of applications. Right. And then they meet with a what? Our family selection committee, which is a committee, I think right now, of eight people totally involved in that committee. And they have a series of meetings they have with the family. They meet in their present home so they know how they're living today. Uh, they meet with them in, in other places to learn more about the family. So we make sure that the family fits the criteria. And we have some specific guidelines as far as income, uh, job stability, credit stability, and those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. That you really want to, as Dale said, help people to live out that dream of having a place, giving right. them some stability for their lives. Mm -hmm. Is there any particular reason, other than the fact that the city um, sold you those pieces of property for a dollar, that you, you kind of focus on that particular area of town? Is that an area where you think there needs to be uh, a lot of work done? Is that an area that there's empty lots? Uh, what is the reason, David, that we might have that kind of, that area east of I-35? I, th I think that uh, one cannot downplay the importance of the uh, price of the lots. I think that that was very important. I think we were looking for uh, an opportunity to continue the work that we had started in 87 in the central part of town. I think as the city grows, and I think all cities are, are face the decline of the downtown, the, mm -hmm. the inner city, I think Habitat's very committed to that. But 
we're not limited to that area alone, but this is just a point in our history where we had an opportunity to build in this neighborhood. It was economically to our advantage. And I think the Neighborhood Association in their latest na newsletter uh, stated that uh, Habitat has been a godsend to the neighborhood. It has put some new energy back into the neighborhood. Donina, what part of town do you live in? Are you uh, north, south, east? Oh, I'm kind of in transit, but I'm going to be living in Travis Heights. Okay, south, right? Yes. Uh, Dale, how about you? I live northeast. Okay. And here you have an opportunity to be kind of center city and make connections with our neighbors in that part of town. And that's an advantage of Habitat for Humanity because it puts people together in that sense that might not otherwise get to meet one another unless you have that opportunity of getting involved. Now, you build a home from the ground up, but you also maybe, Dale, do some uh, renovations on homes, is that true? Well, it, when they first started, I believe they did do some renovation work, but they found out it's, it's just about as economical and much sounder uh, ecologically and environment, uh, uh, insulation-wise and so forth to just start from scratch. And so we're, we're pretty much committed now to just building basic housing new. You're a construction type person and I am not, but I understand that renovation and that type of work, uh, remodeling is kind of tough to go into oh, an old structure and try to redo extremely it. Extremely expensive for, the, for, for what you want. Right. right. Yeah. So you found in Habitat it's easier just to take a piece of property and at start this, from at the this point, that's bottom right. up. Which makes me think of money. Uh, how about money? David, you kind of smile when I say money, and maybe I should go to the president of the board, but let's talk a little bit about you. What, where does money come from in these projects? I, if you get a piece of land for a buck, you can't go wrong there, but then it, it takes then money. Then you got to build the house. Yeah, you got to build a house. Uh, I, when I came to Habitat, I was really uh, pleasantly surprised at how diverse our support was in this community, or is in this community. Uh, a large part of our, our funds uh, comes from the religious community. I mean, we have support from local congregations. But uh, we also, we, I guess we're like many nonprofits. We go to every source we can find, uh, with the exception of, of government. We do not accept government funds, which makes Habitat a little bit unique, I think, in that sense. Uh, again, that's, the, that's the, the challenge to the religious community to help support projects and ministries like Habitat. But uh, we get, of course, our support comes from a lot of individuals. We do a lot of grant writing, et cetera. And that's probably where I asked Dale if you're out there being the foreman. He said, no, I guess we really want him in the office. And you're probably in the office doing some of that, writing grants. And a lot of uh, community development work. Uh, I spend a lot of time. One of the things that we really need at Habitat is more support from congregations. Uh, we have a lot, of, a lot of congregations that come and they may have a work group here or a work group there or a special offering. But we need to be more intentional, I think, about developing and extending that invitation to congregations in the city to, to participate, as well as, of course, businesses and civic organizations, professional organizations. When you talk about getting congregations, uh, you're talking about a variety of congregations. Are you talking about congregations uh, east side of I-35, west side, of all over town? Do you have any examples of uh, linkages of congregations that you might be able to share? Has there been any of that type of thing going on? We have, uh, we have congregations that's, that I think are involved in Habitat from all parts of the city. Uh, we have tended to build, though, about a week behind. We're sort of always catching up, and we haven't really had the opportunity to develop some of the long-term relationships we'd like to. I, I, I really hope in this year we'll start developing some partnerships where maybe a congregation in East Austin and one in West Austin can mm. come together to help work on a house together and be very intentional about it. A lot of that's happening in a spontaneous way, but very informal too. I'm hoping that this program will spark some of that kind of interest in congregations linking up together and through Austin Metropolitan Ministry mm -hmm. being a part of, a, of this whole process. Because it seems to me that, Donita, Dale, what you all are doing in a very uh, important way uh, and in a very specific way for our community is that you're bringing people together as neighbors and enriching one another's lives. And that, uh, I think, is what we, we need in Austin, as I think every community. Not all the building, though, is done necessarily in an urban setting, because Georgia's rural, uh, America's Georgia's rural. Do you know any stories of, uh, of rural uh, work and building of any homes in the rural areas? And would the Austin affiliate ever think about doing something like that? Donita, do you think that'd be something you do, or do you have your hands full right here in the, in the city of Austin? I think that if the land became available at a reasonable cost, we'd certainly consider that here in Austin, in the Austin area. I can't imagine why we wouldn't. Mm -hmm. It sounds to me like you're a pretty well-balanced group then. Uh, yeah. But the key factor is that land. 
And so if there are people who would be interested in donating land, that you would be open to the possibility of receiving land with the uh, goal of what? Building a home, affordable housing. When people receive the house, Donita, do they then pay back to Habitat? What, how does that go? Yes, we, the, the first year they're in the home is a lease purchase agreement with them to determine how they're going to handle home ownership. Most of them have never lived in anything they've owned before. And then after the first year, they're on a 20-year amortization of their mortgage at no interest. Habitat charges them no interest. That's an important key. All right, so they pay it back, but there's no interest at all for this mortgage. Many of these people have been in housing where they may have paid by the week previously and paid as much as five or six hundred dollars a month. And p principal, interest, taxes, and insurance in a Habitat home will run in the neighborhood of two hundred dollars or less. Mm. I think you probably have people clamoring to become a part of it. The, uh, the single parent mother, uh, who, did she, has she anything to say to you about that experience? Pretty exciting? She's just very happy. She, she comes to our, every time we have a groundbreaking, she and her family are there <laughs> and her kids have, some of our Habitat members have actually adopted her kids from the standpoint we have a family nurturing philosophy of where we stay involved with the family oh, after the home excellent. is completed. Excellent. And that is really building community. Dale, if there's some people out there, some men, women out there who enjoy construction work, uh, what would you say to them, inviting them to come and work with you on a project? Would you be kind to them if they showed up oh, on a yeah. project? <laughs> We'd love to have folks come, and we especially need people with carpentry-type skills. That's uh, an area that's it's really sort of difficult to, to get enough people that are finished in an area that, that they can be helpful. I, I do want to also come in and, and be sure to emphasize that there are many, many more people supporting this than just those you see on Saturday building. They're, they're like the people who bring the sandwiches for the lunch time. Uh, that may be all they do, but that, that's needed to be done. And somebody to bring the ice maybe, or somebody to uh, call volunteers to arrange a specific uh, schedule and so forth. But yes, we can encourage people to come any Saturday. We'd lo love to have them. Those people behind the scenes who are giving support and help and assistance to you. Donnie, oh, yeah. uh, President of the Board, uh, one last word as we end the program. Is there something that you might want to say to those who are viewing the Austin Faith Dialogue? Well, I just know that anybody who gets involved will get as much a, out of it as I personally have, and it's a wonderful program that does involve the community, and we all get together and work together. You know what I said to you at the beginning of the program? We want to witness, and you've done a beautiful job. Thank you to both Dale, you, and Donnie, to you. And David, one last word. Invite everybody to come to that uh, conference in February. Absolutely. Please, uh, you know, it's an open event for our community, and we hope that uh, people in Austin will come and participate in it. Thanks to the three of you. One clergy person had this to say about Habitat for Humanity. This is a marvelous opportunity for the local congregation to help meet the housing needs of low-income people in their community and around the world. And even those congregations that don't have a lot of resources can have a vital role in this very important ministry. And I think those words convey to you, watching Austin Faith Dialogue, the opportunity to become involved in a mission of concern for others. Stop by the Habitat for Humanity office. You see their address and their phone number. Thanks to my three guests for being here today, and thanks to each one of you in our viewing audience for watching today, Austin Faith Dialogue.